Good morning, everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to create this seed of life and put it onto, paint it onto the stone and create what you're seeing here. Now I'm going to show you my supplies and there's going to be two different stones and I'll explain that as we go on. So you're going to need a compass, a couple of small mandala tools, a paintbrush, a ruler, um, and we are using crystals today. So we're going to start, I'm going to do it on paper so we can get used to what we're going to do here. So grab out a piece of paper, get a pencil and your compass and put a little dot right in the center of your paper. And then once you've done that, I've set my compass here to a half of an inch uh, so I can have a one inch diameter circle and then just draw your circle. I struggle with a compass, so <laughs> Yeah, um, you're going to see me just really struggling, so don't feel bad. I'm doing it on paper because doing it on a stone can be a little bit tricky, but don't let that throw you. Just just go for it. Okay, so for the second uh, circle, you're going to put your compass just anywhere on the outside of that first circle and draw your next circle. Now, where those two lines intersect, where I'm pointing right there, you're just going to put your compass there again. And we're going to draw our third circle. Now you want to go right through that middle dot that I just pointed to, which is the center of your first circle. And we're going to do this all the way around. Yeah, I'm having a little trouble. Okay, so where that just crossed, we're going to start our second circle. I mean third circle, excuse me. And now we're going to cross over the top. And then we're also going to cross over the intersection where we um, cross the first two uh, circles right there and go all the way around and try to keep your point stuck to the paper. <laughs> okay, where we're going over right there, that's going to be the next area. So put your point right on that intersection. We're going to cross over there and there. and make your circle. I think you can probably see the seeds coming to life now, the seed of life. All right, we have two more to go. And we're gonna put the point there. I'm gonna cross there, cross there, and cross over there. Now I keep turning the paper because it's more comfortable for me if I turn it this way. Uh, and also you can see better, but just, just turn it however it feels comfortable for you. Okay, so after we get this done, we're going to have one more circle to go. And guess where it's going to go? Yep, right there. Place your final circle and sit back and take a look at your seat of life. You're going to cross there, you're going to cross the center, and you're going to cross on both sides. All right, now if you want, you can put a circle directly around that seat of life. Um, so it'll look like this. This is one that I like to create a few of them ahead of time and get them ready. So I have this black and gold one ready. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a, a circle that's a little bit bigger than my full circles, but you can put it wherever you'd like. Okay, this is the stone that we're going to actually use for our design. And I, like I said, I have a whole bunch of them going. So this one here, I have already drawn the pet, the um, the seed on, and I've erased most of it because I don't like to paint on the lines. So um, it's just enough for me to see. And I'm putting my compass right there in the center, and I'm just giving myself a line right across, right around the top of it, because that's part of our design. Okay. Now, I always have a line going around like the girdle part, the middle of the, um, the edge of the stone. And so what you do is just take a pencil and anything that's going to uh, prop it up and hold it in this position where you want. It doesn't really matter to, to me where you put it. You can put it wherever you like. I'm just using another pencil to <laughs> brace another pencil and I'm drawing my line around. We just want it to be even. Okay, so now here's the stone painted the way we're going to paint it. Now, uh, 
I've used different colors because I painted this one and I didn't like these colors when I got going. So I redid it again. And um, this is the one I'm actually using. It's black in the center. And I've gone around with the, I can't think of the name of that gold. Don't you just hate when that happens? Mayan gold. Mayan gold. And I've, um, I've painted my center black. And then the outer, the second circle is in sandstone. It's an older color. I don't even know if it's still around. It's something I've had for quite a while. Uh, it's just a regular acrylic. I believe it's deco art. And then the very outer circle is, um, it's called lichen gray. And again, that's another color. I'm not sure if it's around anymore. It could be just use whatever colors you'd like. And then I painted the bottom all the way around black. And then with the Mayan gold, you can use any kind of gold, color gold you want. This is the one I wanted to use. I've gone around and I've outlined all of my seat of life and all of the outer rings. So I have the black outlined in gold. I have the seat of life outlined in gold. And I have the sandstone, the lichen gray, and the black. I had to take a drink, sorry. Okay, so this is going to take a little while. This is really a time, a little time consuming. And you're going to go out of the lines and it doesn't really matter if you do go out of the lines just go back with the other color and clean it up i did have to do that a couple of times i just didn't uh, keep it in the in the video now with a hologram i've gone and just placed it on the black and that's just plain hologram and when it dries it gives it this beautiful iridescent green color and i just love that all right antique copper and i'm using a white tool here and you're going to notice that I pretty much only use a couple of tools. Now, this is the, this, the um, white tool. I bend the tips of my tools. That's why they look like that. Uh, you don't buy them like that. I'm using the same tool, and I'm just putting a dot, and I'm just walking it down and outlining the gold. I get a lot of questions about what size tools I'm using, and you're going to see that I really don't use that many tools. It really goes according to how much paint I put on and how many times I dab onto the stone. And this is going to keep adding more paint. You'll see that here when I do the top part of the green. And so with Peridot, which is a metallic, I'm um, just putting a, a larger dot and I'm walking down to the center bottom. And if I had been smart, I would have put a large dot down the bottom right at the point there so that I didn't have, I could walk to it <laughs> and not have to just fill it in later. All right, now here you see I'm putting a large dot and another dot, which is, and then a small dot. So I have two large dots and one small dot, and they're the same tool. I'm adding more paint and a quick dot there, and I'm getting two different size dots. two larger dots and a small, all with the same tool. Here is what I was talking about where I should have put that big green dot down the bottom and walked to it. So it's a little uneven, you can see around the edges, but that's how I did that. Okay, this is Royal Ruby. Again, I'm using that same little white tool. And this tool, of course, all of our tools have two different sides to it. So from what I can see, this is the largest side of the tool, and now I am just walking out with the smaller side. So there's five dots all, all totaled. The middle one is the largest, and then the other four are walked out from the center. Now with the rose gold, I'm just filling in some little space there. I didn't put that many. You can put as many as you like. You can leave it clear. You can put another color. I just filled it in with some rose gold. Real simple, real simple. Now with the antique copper again and that same white tool, you'll see I'm putting a fairly good size uh, dot right where those two circles are intersecting. 
And once I've done that uh, with the same tool, I'm going to walk little dots all the way down. And I do this all the way around. I usually will do one side and then go back and do the other side because sometimes I want to do dots on this side and then I might want to do a big swoosh on the other side. But this, this time I'm just going to go right ahead with the dots and I'm going to fill it all in. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to put a little bit of a bigger dot right at the very bottom of the circle. I'm just walking that out. And I'm going to do that all the way around. And you can see that tool has the purple on it. And that's pretty much how you can tell that I'm using the same tool. Uh, it, um, it really doesn't matter what tool you're using, unless you want a big flat surface. If you want to make a big flat dot, which you will see me do in a little bit, you'll need to use um, a bigger tool. All right, so I put these black dots here. I was going to do something else, and um, they're not going to stay. I'm using mushroom with small tool again, and I've gone around and just put little dots below the gold on the black. With the blue tool, which is a little bit bigger than the, or it's a good size bigger than, than the white one, I'm just putting some of those mushroom uh, swooshes all the way up. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So I'll have them coming up from the left and the right. I'm going to put a whole series of these uh, swooshes going up like that. Um, I start with the mushroom and then I go to uh, black. So I use the blue tool and I just turned it over and used the smaller side. And uh, we did the same thing, and put some swishes from the back, from the outside up into the center on both sides, all the way around. I'm gonna do the same thing with the rose gold and the white tool. And this is the smaller side of the white tool. I'm giving myself some little rose gold swishes. Now, after this, I do the green right down the center and I really should have done the gold, the rose gold last. Um, I do it off camera after because the green sitting up, up on the top, which I haven't done yet, looks a little odd to me. So yeah, see the faces? I was trying something on those black dots with the mushroom and the, oh, all that there. I didn't like it. So I'm getting rid of it. And instead of just, just getting rid of it at the beginning and not even showing you, I'm showing you how I clean up. So I have a, uh, an X-Acto knife and I'm going around and I'm just scraping off that other paint. Now, if it's dry, you're gonna have better results. It's a little bit easier because a lot of the paint will just pop off. Mine was a, still a little bit tacky. But once I had that cleared up, I was just able to go around with my angle brush because that's the brush that I like to use. Doesn't mean you need one. You can use whatever you'd like. And I repainted that um, lichen gray and cleaned up the, uh, the mess that I had made and refinished my, my gold and just, just neatened everything up. Now I can go back with the copper, anti-copper, and my small white tool. And I'm just going to put a whole series of little dots around, just like I did with the mushroom that's currently right above it. And I did that all the way around. This is a really, really simple, simple pattern. The hard part is learning and doing the seed of life in the center. Practice a lot on paper and then eventually be, it'll be second nature. So I want to bring all those wishes together and I thought my handle of my brush would work, but my brush is a little too rounded and it's not giving me an, enough area to grab the paint to cover what I want to cover. So I did grab a, a flat tool. It's one of my white acrylic tools and I think it's probably like a three or four millimeter size. Um, just use whatever is going to cover that for you. So now here, this is what I was talking about before. I put down a green dot because I wasn't sure if I wanted just a dot or if I wanted a swoosh to come all the way in. And I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, hmm, do I like the swoosh or do I like the dot? I like the swoosh. 
So I'm going to pull the swoosh all the way down here and do the swoosh all the way around. Now the green is going over the, red, the rose gold and I don't really like the way that looks. So later on, um, I don't do it on camera, but at the end you can see where the gold, the rose gold is actually coming over the top of the green because I go back and I do bring it up. Now here I'm showing you the, um, a wooden skewer and a toothpick. You can use whichever one you'd like. I use the skewer because it's easier to hold, plain and simple. Um, and I have the sandstone and I'm just going to put little off center dots kind of dripping off the edge of the mushroom there. I just want to give it a little uh, dimension, a little, a little oomph. I don't know. It looks kind of cute. <laughs> Now we're going to do a lot of prettying up, some blinging. I'm using hologram. I have my blue tool again, and I'm just going to put some hologram on all of my, uh, I think those are ruby. So go ahead and just put hologram on all of those dots. And it goes on milky looking like that but then it dries clear it's the same same stuff that we use on over the black which is now shining kind of green it's it's awesome stuff i love it okay so i'm doing that also on the green uh dot that we're putting over the and see you can see the gold rose gold now has been put over the green and uh, looks a lot better now I'm putting it on the, um, the, around the edge there, and I started putting them one right after to the other, and then I realized that they were very close and they were gonna start running. So I did every other one, and as I went around, um, they started to dry, and when I made it back to the beginning, it was okay. I was able to put the, um, the middle dots back in and not have everything run together. Now I'm doing the same thing with the hologram, only I'm putting it, covering both of the two dots below, and that's it for the design. Now I have this matte ultra, uh, matte clear ultra cover, Rust-Oleum spray sealer, and I take it outside and I give it one coat of sealer, let it dry. Now with Judy Kinn's diamond glaze, I love this to use this for you know attaching stones and gems or whatever. It uh, goes on. It's very very clear and it's great uh, bonding. It's really strong. So with a wax pencil, I'm picking up my crystals and I'm placing them on the intersections that I want them on. So I'm putting, you can put any size you want here. You could put a different color if you want. I just want to go with plain clear. These are not like Swarovskis or anything. I do have them, but I'm, I don't use them on this. This is just a, uh, a set of uh, glass crystals that I bought off of um, Amazon. I show you a picture at the beginning there. It comes with the tweezers wax pencil and a, I think it's 2,000 of these little stones little clear stones and I just put a dot of Judykins and place my little crystals just get it let it get a little tacky before I put the crystals on just so they don't slide around and folks that's it she's dry she's beautiful I love this stone. It's just really pretty, really simple. Let me know what you think about this. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I will get back to you. I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And most of all, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel. If you like what you see, I'd like to bring you more. So thank you. Have a good day. Happy painting.